Hi guys, uh, I thought I would do a new Ancients tutorial for you this week. I have this uh, Thracian leader type uh, chieftain figure from Morgan's Foundry. You can see it's an earlier sculpt. It's not the best in terms of facial features, for instance, but uh, I think he's got a lot of character and a good pose and everything, so I thought, you know, it'd be fun to go with him anyway. Now, if you don't know anything about the Thracians, they were kind of the northern neighbors of the ancient Greeks, and they were kind of a collection of small kingdoms and hill tribes. They had a really uh, ferocious reputation in antiquity, and they often uh, hired themselves out as well as mercenaries. So if you have a classical Greek army or a Hellenistic army or even a Roman army, you can often incorporate um, a unit of Thracians into your force. And they are really fun to paint too. They had really interesting, almost unique equipment, I'd say, for the classical period. Um, particularly, I guess the classical period particularly, because you would see they wore these, these really bright colored tunics and cloaks with big bold geometric patterns on them. Uh, there's a lot of evidence of this in Greek vase paintings, that's how we know that they did that, and also in tomb painting, which is how we have some idea about what kind of colors uh, they might have worn. And the, the, the sort of the color combination and the geometric the use of geometric patterns is really pretty unique for antiquity. Um, and then later on you see in the Hellenistic era they tone down their dress a little bit, but still they're wearing, uh, for example, black and dark blue tunics sometimes, which maybe in modern terms doesn't sound that exciting, but for the ancient world it's fairly rare. We don't have a lot of evidence actually of ancients wearing these really dark colors, or ancient soldiers anyway. So that's another thing that makes the Thracians a bit unique. And in the Hellenistic period, of course, too, they adopted the Rumphaya, which was this huge two-handed, like, sickle-like sword that just makes them look uh, super badass. Now, the guy I'm showing you in the tutorial is actually from the earlier sort of classical age, so we're going to be looking at how to do the bright colors and geometric patterns, and, you know, we're not going to in be touching on sort of the later Hellenistic developments, but I think that's okay because these earlier Thracians, I think, are arguably... Uh, more fun to paint. They've got more options and just things that you can do with them. There's actually even evidence that the Thracians may have used body painting or had tattoos. So that's even yet another possibility that you could maybe work with when you are painting up your Thracians. And um, I know this, this maybe all sounds a little bit odd or maybe hard to picture how this is going to look, but I think uh, this video is going to be a lot of fun and you're going to be kind of hopefully pleasantly surprised by the results. Okay, uh, to start off with here are all the paints that you're going to need for this model. Uh, this obviously doesn't include the skin tone and I don't notice that a couple of the names are a bit obscured here by that really big bottle of Agrax Earthshade. Uh, the one that you can't see in the back there is Vallejo Ivory, that kind of light pale color. And if you can't read the red bottle label, that is just uh, Citadel Mephiston red. I'm going to start out by working on the tunic here. Uh, I decided it would be fun to go for kind of a dark blue with sort of lighter blue patterns on it. I saw something like this in the uh, Osprey book on Thracian, so that's what I'm going to do. My base here is a mixture of um, Vallejo German Grey and Vallejo Oxford Blue, though obviously at this point it's mostly grey and not too much blue. My next layer is just with a bit more of the Oxford Blue added in to get it uh, slightly lighter. I'm trying to be a little bit subtle in my highlights on this uh, tunic. I don't want to go too overboard with lightening it up, so that's why I'm just kind of taking it easy here. Here I'm applying a layer of just pure Oxford Blue now at this uh, point. You can really start to see some contrast uh, starting to develop. It's, it's not a very hard area to paint, I didn't think. Uh, because the, the wrinkles here are fairly subtle and you know there's some clear areas that are really in shadow of, as opposed to some areas where you know there's supposed to be light hitting so it's it's not very hard to figure out what you need to do in terms of applying paint. Uh, next I've lightened the oxford blue slightly with a bit of Vallejo dark uh, blue gray and you can see I'm 
very carefully applying some kind of subtle highlights, especially to the tops of creases and folds and wrinkles and always along the edges, of course. Also, you know, tops of shoulders, all those kind of usual places. Uh, and just, uh, you know, very carefully sort of building it up in a couple layers. Um, now I'm going to use the dark blue gray with just a little bit of the oxford blue in it to base coat sort of the sleeves of his under tunic that just peek out there. I thought it'd be nice to kind of do them in blue, but just sort of a slightly different shade, a lighter shade. So that's what I'm going to be going with here. Once I've got the base on, I then went up to just pure uh, dark blue gray and use that to apply some sort of initial highlights to the sleeves. They're pretty simple, flat areas with not a lot of sculpted relief, so you won't really need to spend a lot of time on that. Once that was done, I was ready to move on to uh, painting a pattern on the tunic, and I'm going to be doing that. At least the base color of my um, pattern is going to be the uh, dark uh, blue-gray just by itself. I've switched over to my number zero brush here because I'm going to be applying lots of kind of very thin lines and little dots and sort of s different kinds of line patterns and that's just a lot easier to do uh, when you've got a fine brush and of course you want to make sure that your paint is nice and thin and you can kind of have fun here. Uh, lines are good, dots are good, um, you can see zigzag lines work really well. Or you can do sort of a crenellation pattern that looks really good or a Greek key if you're feeling really ambitious. And you can see with the Thracians, the patterns really tend to just be the different kinds of lines and different kinds of thicknesses that just are kind of stacked up kind of in a row. And I'm just gonna pretty much do these sort of patterns from the sort of the top to the bottom of the tunic. Next, I'm gonna be uh, highlighting my pattern and my sleeves a little further and I've done that by taking Vallejo Ivory and mixing it into my dark blue gray here. And so on the sleeves I'm uh, applying several extra layers because I feel like you know it's a bigger area you need more sort of slight variation. So I kind of made a sort of an intermediate mix of the dark blue gray and ivory um, and then applied another sort of even higher um, layer to it as well. Um, and then on the patterns on his tunic, I sort of didn't, I sort of skipped that sort of intermediate highlight that I did apply to the tunic. I hope this is all making sense and just use that sort of second one. And you can see I'm applying it uh, to areas of the pattern uh, where I think there would be more light hitting. Basically, I'm trying to maintain that darker base color of the pattern down in areas where I think there would be wrinkles and folds. Uh, and you can even add another third really bright almost ivory blue highlight to some areas if you really want to get a lot of contrast and variation in your pattern which generally it looks good so you know if you've got the patience why not just make sure you're using a small brush here and that you keep your paint nice and thin because that's super important for building being able to do a neat job here now i'm going to start uh working on his cloak now as always, really figuring out colors in antiquity can be super problematic because we often don't have really great sources. And with Thracians, we have a lot of evidence for the kind of patterns that they wore on their clothing from like Greek vase paintings, but those of course don't include color uh, so that you don't really get that. Uh, we do know something about color from uh, sort of tomb paintings and frescoes, but that's kind of limited. But uh, some of the pictures I saw tended to give uh, Th Thracian's cloaks that were either sort of a natural, unbleached looking wool or linen color, or else a more white, bright, more bleached color. I decided personally to go for a warmer shade. I thought that would look nicer with the blue. So I'm going to be base coating the uh, cloak here using uh, Vallejo khaki. The next step is to highlight the cloak, and there's nothing very difficult about this, but it is rather time consuming because you're dealing with a big surface area and a lot of really smooth kind of creases and folds. So you're, you're best served by, you know, gradually building up very subtle layers. 
uh, and in terms of you know paint colors, all I'm doing to create sort of highlight layers for this cloak is taking Vallejo Ivory and sort of gradually adding it into my khaki and just very carefully building it up. And just the slower you go with this process, the easier it's going to be to get a nice, smooth, even blend. I mean, you can go from a fairly dark color to a fairly light color more quickly if you feel comfortable with that or if you're comfortable with doing more extreme blending. Uh, but I personally find that this is just a little bit more relaxing to paint this way. So that's why I'm going with more subtle layers. And you can just see as I as I go, I keep adding in more of the ivory and I get it lighter and lighter. Um, and, you, and you can stop here whenever you want. Um, you can get a very nice sort of darker shade or you can go for a more pleasant, very light shade because these obviously probably came in all sort of different ranges of color from lighter to darker uh, so it's really up to you when you're when you feel happy with you know sort of the, how light it is and the amount of contrast you're getting I could have gone higher with highlights on this I could have made it brighter but I, at some point I just got really I was just pretty much you know happy with how it looked I felt like it was uh, light enough and I don't think I even actually went up to a hundred percent pure ivory here as my uh, high highlight which uh, my, so some people might have a temptation to do, but again, it's up to you. You kind of want to do this to taste until you feel like everything just looks kind of the way you had in mind. I'm going to use the same color palette to paint kind of that fur or shaggy stuff that's kind of capping the tops of his boots. So here I'm just going to start out again by base coating that area using the khaki. You'll probably want to go a little thicker with the paint here, or I don't know, maybe alternatively put enough water in that it flows really well because you've got a lot of relief sculpted in here and it can be tricky to get the color down in all the cracks. I then went ahead and applied a light, thin wash of Agrax Earthshade here just to help with the detailing and all of this showing the relief better. Again, keep it thin here. You don't want this getting too dark. And then I just started highlighting the fur using the really the same process I did on the cloak so I started with khaki and I started just gradually adding in a more ivory to lighten it up progressively I'm working with a number zero brush here again because you've got that sort of furry look it's easier to do sort of more give a, more of a sort of a I don't know streaky sort of look at where you pick out individual fibers so uh, so yeah I'm gonna just keep kind of going over and building this up um, I opted in the end to go for a, sort of a lighter color at the finish. My last highlight on these was actually pure ivory, uh, and I tended to have a sort of lighter color toward the bottom of the hair strands and then have it a little bit darker at the top. And then that sort of edge piece, I also highlighted it a little bit uh, higher. Uh, when I was first highlighting these, I really didn't worry too much about uh, losing detail by getting paint down in sort of the, the sculpted sort of areas. I, I, you know, I just worried more about sort of the big general areas and getting sort of the color transitions I wanted. Uh, and then once I was further along, I just went ahead and again applied a uh, light Agrax Earthshade wash over everything, uh, which helped again unify the colors and again sort of bring back out all those recesses and that extra detail. And then after that, you can go back in and highlight a little bit more with really light colors to, you know, help bring back anything that you thought got a little too uh, dulled down. And by the same token, you can go in with some khaki too and define some of those darker areas between the sort of the fur clumps if you feel like they got, you know, paint in them where you didn't want, you need to, you know, kind of strengthen that definition a bit. Now my next step here was to start painting a pattern on the cloak. This may be fun for you or a nightmare depending on, you know, how you feel about, you know, painting patterns like this. These are, as far as patterns go, fairly simple, easy things to do. I am using a small brush here and, and I am keeping my paint nice and thin. Uh, you could make up your own geometric pattern here just sort of based on inspiration from, you know, pictures. And I really do suggest you check out some pictures of Thracians, either reconstructions or look at them on Greek face paintings to get some ideas of potential patterns. I, again, really use the uh, Osprey book on Thracians a lot for this. And they even have um, a selection of sort of uh, cloak patterns that they have, that were found on uh, Greek 
vases and they sort of collated them, collected them all together in one place. Um, so that makes it a lot easier and flattened them out so it's a lot easier to see. And so this one is actually based very directly off a real one in the books. Uh, and there's some evidence even that the Thracians might have been like the Scots in that they might have worn certain patterns depending on what village or king they supported. It might have been kind of a tribal thing, but we don't really know. Uh, in terms of color scheme for this, it's really going to be up to you. As I said in the beginning, you can go with really garish colors potentially on these guys. Bright greens, reds, blues, if you like. I really decided I preferred to opt for something that was a little bit more toned down, a little bit more muted and subtle, because I just liked how it looked better, and I wanted to incorporate some of the colors I'd already been working with. So uh, I, I'm using three different colors on my tunic uh, here. I'm going to go with sort of a red brown, a dark brown, and that blue that I already had in the tunic anyway. Um, at this point, I'm starting out by just base coating, uh, or at least roughing, I should say roughing out what the patterns are and where I want them with sort of the darkest shade color. Uh, the shade color for those red areas there is Vallejo Saddle Brown. Uh, the shade color for the brown areas that I'm applying is uh, German Camouflage Black Brown. And then the uh, color for those blue stripes I'm applying is Oxford Blue. Again, sort of the, sort of the medium shade I used on the tunics. Uh, at some point I actually kind of ran, I was using a actual source to paint this pattern, but at some point I kind of uh, applied all of it and I, the tunic got too long, or I mean, sorry, the, the cloak got too long and I ran out of space. Uh, so then I started kind of making up my the pattern. I sort of started improvising and adding new stripes and layers to it that hadn't been in the original design, but I think they all kind of ended up looking well together. I'm now going to highlight the, the three colors sort of individually and I'm going to start out with the dark brown. My first highlight here is just mixing some saddle uh, brown into the German camouflage black brown and you can see I'm applying it to the tops of all the folds and creases uh, where the, the pattern kind of intersects with them. And then I added a second highlight with just pure saddle brown and yeah that will make it at first look a little bit like the base of that other color but just bear with me for a while it won't all look the same when it's done and if you want you can go even higher here I think I didn't film it but I did end up making a third highlight where I just mixed a bit of ivory into my saddle brown. Next I highlighted the red brown areas uh, my first highlight was taking the saddle brown and adding a bit of Citadel Mephiston red into it and again you can see I'm applying it where the pattern sort of intersects with the sort of tops of the folds in the tunic and then I just built that up by applying a couple of layers then of just pure Mephiston red on higher areas and and again I didn't film it I think but I finished by adding a little bit of ivory into that Mephiston red to get it when it made it slightly pink but that doesn't really matter and I use that to get one final really extreme highlight uh, on sort of the tops of the wrinkles and folds where I thought you know really needed that extra contrast. I'm now going to go ahead and highlight the blue. I'm doing this very simply. I just took the Oxford blue and I'm lightening it with a bit of ivory again. Uh, at my first highlight I don't put too much ivory in and then the second highlight I add a little bit more um, so this color this this lightening process it, because I'm putting that white directly into the blue it tends to go a lot faster so you'll want to be a lot more careful about how much you apply of these sort of highlights on the blue and how high you go I had to do <clears throat> a little bit more uh, in-depth blending because I've got I, I, put, I paint this really wide uh, blue stripe sort of at the top of his cloak where there's a lot of wrinkles and folds so I had to do some more sort of complex uh, layering and stuff there to make it uh, look good basically. Uh, next I'm going to start working on the leather areas uh, um, and I'm just base coating those all right now with German camouflage black brown. I'm applying it here to his boots but also to his belt, uh, his baldrics, uh, the grip of his sword and also most of the scabbard of his uh, knife dagger. You, it's very obscured on this model, but you can just see it enough that you kind of have to paint it. 
I'm going to now start highlighting the leather here uh, with uh, Vallejo Leather Brown. Very creative. Uh, I know I often do my first highlight with chocolate brown, but I wanted to mix it up a little bit. And you actually don't see very much difference between leather and chocolate brown. I'm trying to keep my paint here, here really thin and apply it subtly because I really want that uh, under layer to show through. I've been a little bit unhappy recently with how leather has looked in my models. I felt like uh, sometimes I get impatient with it because it's often a sort of a detail or something I do towards the end so I apply uh, too much of my lightning color into it too quickly and then I don't think it looks good anymore so I'm trying to take it slower here, be more careful, uh, be more subtle. So I'm lightening the leather brown here using uh, brown sand but I'm making sure my layers are thin. Um, they're very gradual, so I'm not putting much brown sand in at a time, and I'm building it up, you know, really slowly and carefully. Uh, my final highlight, I think, uh, uh, it, I guess it is pure brown sand, but I only ended up using it really as an edge highlight sort of on some of the straps like on his belt and baldric and stuff and I really was careful not to like overdo it on his boots and stuff which is something that I have been guilty of in the past. I'm going to be doing a bit more with base coating uh, some areas now. I'm going to be working on his shield here. Uh, uh, this is often, again, depicted as being a white or cream color. I think it was covered in hide, uh, sort of a natural colored hide, and then painted. So I'm going with that here. Uh, I decided to use the same sort of basic colors I've used elsewhere in the model, but with sort of different sort of brightness. So my base on the shield is uh, some ivory, which I've darkened very uh, slightly with um, khaki here and you'll probably need several layers of course because we're going over such a dark base at the same time I thought I'd go ahead and base coat his hair and I figured you know why not do blonde you know why not go all the way be a little bit crazy uh, I'm base coating the hair then with just pure Vallejo khaki it may seem a little like ugly or right now but I found that khaki is actually one of the best base coats if you're going for kind of a natural looking blonde color I'm going to leave the hair then alone for the moment and do some highlighting on the shield. What I'm doing here is I've just taken uh, some pure ivory and I'm going to start layering it. You can see over the top of the shield in sort of smooth uh, horizontal uh, strokes and I'm kind of blending downwards and sort of building up a lighter color towards the top and making sure it's very subtly darker at the base of the shield. And you can see that's just, again, just applying horizontal strokes and making it especially right along the top edge and just pulling downwards. Um, I did a final highlight on the shield which was actually a mixture of white and the ivory and again same process apply, starting at the top um, and just pulling it down uh, and, and this way we're, we're getting the shield is going to have sort of that same color sort of warmth the same sort of tone as some of the as the other you know the rest of the model but you can see it's, it's going to be very much lighter than the other surfaces. Because it takes a while to dry, I thought I would quickly wash his hair here with a seraphim sepia. And, you know, I'm going to go back in later and do some highlighting. But while this is drying, again, I can work on other things. And I'm going to be focusing now on the pattern on the shield. The Thracian shield patterns seem to have been very bold, bright, graphic, simple sort of uh, looking designs. Uh, they should be something that most people will be capable of freehanding. And not only that, they appear to have often been fairly crude in real life. So if you're if they're not very even, they're a bit lumpy or off, that's okay. It kind of fits with the whole aesthetic. Uh, again, I use references in the Osprey Thracians book to find this pattern, and I chose one that was actually one of the much more relatively complex ones. This is about as difficult as they get. So you know that should be reassuring to people who want something simpler because really you can find ones that are really nothing more than just two dots that's like it so there's something there for everybody uh difficulty level wise and i wanted to again uh, incorporate colors that i'd already been using in the model so uh, i'm base coating here these areas using the saddle brown i'm going to go for that brown red shade on the shield 
And you can see I'm just kind of evening the lines up, trying to get everything smooth and neat. And I'm gonna be using the ivory and a bit of the khaki too in some areas, just to clean up and where I think I got the red line too uneven or just not how I want. I'm just going back in and really tidying that up. Uh, this pattern is really only two colors and the majority is red, but this there's also these sort of two blue dots, uh, sort of, I guess, eyes almost. And I'm just gonna be painting those with uh, Oxford blue again as the base, as you'll see. And, you know, and then they have sort of like a, a pupil, I guess, in the center of the eyes. So the easiest thing to do is to apply uh, a blue dot, a big blue dot, let that dry, then put a smaller blue or a smaller ivory dot in the middle of that and then finish off with a teeny tiny blue point in the very center once your uh, white or ivory has finished drying. I'm then going to do a bit of highlighting work on the pattern. I'm using the sort of same colors and highlights I worked with on the uh, cloak. So I'm taking here just some pure Mephiston red and you can see I'm applying it to the red pattern but I'm really focusing uh, the highlights uh, more towards the top of the shield so that is where the, the, the pattern area is to, at the top of the shield I'm applying more color to and uh, lighter color highlights and then applying less highlights and leaving it a bit darker where the pattern is more towards the bottom. Uh, I, after I applied the Mephiston red uh, and built it up a little bit, I then actually added a little bit of ivory into it and applied some further highlights, again, keeping them even more towards the top. So basically, the more highlights you do, the lighter you make uh, your color, then that those, those highlight colors just means that they the lighter they are, the more towards the top of your pattern they need to stay, basically, to have a good effect. Uh, I did end up highlighting the blue dots just uh, <laughs> with a little bit of ivory mixed into my Oxford blue, but it's such a small area, you almost wouldn't even really have to do it. I I'm not sure that you can even tell the difference. I'm now going to start highlighting the hair. Um, I'm using uh, dark sand as my highlight color on the hair. And for my first highlight, I just mixed a bit of it into the khaki. Uh, and you can see I'm really focusing very roughly on just uh, sort of picking out specific clumps. This guy's got really wild kind of hair and this kind of weird chin patch beard. To me, he looks like kind of a douchey 90s rock star for some reason. Uh, and I guess me painting him blonde probably didn't do anything to dispel that look. But anyway, you can see here, I'm really focusing on, you know, picking out the specific clumps, not worrying too much about individual strands or if I lose a bit of detail in the sculpting. Uh, my next highlight then on the hair was basically the uh, dark sand again, dark and ever so slightly uh, with the khaki, but a much lighter here. And you can see I'm just, again, same thing, going over the clumps. Usually when I'm highlighting hair, after I've sort of picked out the sort of specific areas. The way I like to highlight it is apply uh, lighter highlights towards the end of the hair and then have the roots or where it's close to the head appear darker. I think that usually gives a good result. So again, it's really going to depend on the hair and a lot of other factors uh, how you do that. Uh, and I'm sorry again if I if this section is off camera a little bit too much. It's very very difficult to paint the top of a model's head and also uh, film at the same time. So I hope you understand. I then added a final highlight where I mixed ivory into my dark sand. Um, and again, this is really you can see I'm really using to pick out the tips in the hair and all the ends and you know down towards the neck and the, that area I also tend to like to leave darker as well because that tear tends to be shorter and more in the shadows. Um, what I did after I'd applied this high highlight is I went back in with the Seraphim Seppi and I applied a very light sort of pin wash which I used to help uh, focus areas that I wanted darker but also to go back over the entire head of hair just to pull back out some of those finer detail sculpts in the strands and stuff and just you know unify everything a bit more you may find after this that things get a little oranger than you like or you just you're not maybe necessarily happy with the look and I usually after this sort of wash I tend to go back in one more time and touch up some of the highest highlight areas as well just you know to make things look a little better Next, I'm going to work on the blade of his sort of 
knife sword thing here. I'm base coating it here with a mixture of German gray and some Vallejo Air Chrome. Now Chrome, it's basically an arbitrary choice. Uh, steel or silver would probably work about the same. Uh, and my base here is pretty dark. And then to highlight, I just started gradually adding in more chrome to my base as you can see and i'm sort of highlighting the top part of the blade since there's a real clear division there uh a little bit the base but or the bottom area but mostly the top and you can see i'm just carefully and subtly building it up till i get to just pure chrome by itself which you know i want to apply very thinly and kind of blend out and only really run it intensely kind of along the top edge and sort of that sort of seam in the middle of the blade Now the Thracians were known to be kind of master gold goldsmiths. They liked gold, they liked blingy stuff. So I'm painting pretty much everything that's left now in this model using uh, gold. And so, you know, cause he's got various bracelets and bands on and he's got some hardware on his, you know, belts, buckles, stuff like that. The sort of the grip, the, the guard on his sword, some hardware on his scabbard, all that kind of stuff. It's all gonna be gold. So uh, my base coat here is a mixture of the uh, German camouflage black brown with some of that army painter greedy gold. Yes, I'm still using it. It's a nice gold shade. It's warm. It's pretty. I mean, why not? So I base coated all those areas and then I just went back in with the pure greedy gold as you can see and I'm going to just start uh, highlighting them. I'm going to keep it pretty thin my first coat and then kind of build it up to be a little bit stronger where I think that's necessary. Finally, I applied some very high highlights that are a mixture of the gold and the Vallejo Air Chrome, uh, just to parts where I thought there was going to be a lot of bling and shine and where I really wanted the metal surface to gleam a lot. Okay, so here is the finished uh, sort of classical era uh, Thracian warrior. We're talking probably like uh, 4th, 5th century uh, BC here. Uh, after that, once you get in sort of closer to the turn of the millennium the, towards the Hellenistic era, that's when you start to see the more sort of toned down uniforms and actually their dress starts to look just a lot more like what pretty much everybody else at that time was wearing. So this sort of very unique sort of cultural dress that you see here was, it was really an, a sort of an earlier uh, thing. This model was fun to paint um and but it, it, it it's i wouldn't say as far as ancient models go it's not one of the easier ones because you are dealing with all these patterns and all these colors and it all has to you know be highlighted separately but i mean i, I was particularly happy with the color palette i chose here uh, how the different uh um colors kind of really worked together and that I was kind of able to maintain sort of a consistent tone, sort of the same sort of warmth you see and coming back in all the colors. And that's probably largely because of my pretty consistent use of ivory when I was highlighting or lightening shades. So you can get that kind of nice uh, consistency. And I intentionally went for a more uh, subtle, um, maybe uh, toned down palette than you might even see, you might even expect to see with Thracians. But that was a little bit of artistic license. I just thought that looked nicer. But I hope you can kind of get a sense of why I think Thracians really are cool uh, ancient units that maybe don't get as much attention as they deserve because they really are unique and interesting and different and a kind of a fun, cool way to add some flavor to an ancient army. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you, li if you did, please like it, uh, share it, do leave me comments, or naturally you can subscribe too if you want to keep up with all the latest developments. So that's all for now, and I'll see you next time.